we get through those first two stages, um, we start moving into the stages that actually are leading us to genocide. Um, the third stage is discrimination. It's a term you're probably already familiar with. Um, in this case, it's taking it to an extreme um, degree. So discrimination is when the dominant or the perpetrator group uses mostly law and political power to take away rights, civil rights, um, from other groups or from the targeted group. So the powerless group may not be accorded full civil rights or even citizenship, which is essentially what happened to the Jewish population. Examples, um, the Nuremberg Laws of 1935. When I post this podcast, you will be able to, if you want, um, click that link and it will take you to a lot more information about the Nuremberg Race Laws. These are essentially what kicked off the escalation towards what most people recognize as the Holocaust. Um, and they were extremely specific. Uh, so down to the point where there's marriage laws. Um, you couldn't marry across groups. So a German could not marry a Jewish person or a Roma. Um, or uh, you, if you were Jewish, you could not fly the German flag. Um, and it's important to remember that these people are German citizens and they are as German as any other citizens. And they've been there for like 900 years. So that would be like telling a Catholic person that because they're Catholic, they cannot fly the American flag. It's very, very strange, and it's a way of stripping their right to be a full-fledged citizen. Um, in the Rwandan genocide, and I'm trying to bring up multiple genocide examples so that you guys get a broader concept of these stages. Um, so Rwandan genocide, the tribes were, everyone had to have an identification on their passport that distinguished their tribe, whether they were Hutu or Tutsi, and they were required to carry that at all times. And then in the um, Khmer regime in Cambodia, uh, under Pol Pot, who was the dictator, uh, they used extreme form of communism to strip all rights from minority groups. So using that political power to take away those civil rights. And then this is where it's going to start getting a lot tougher. So I'm going to remind you again, if you have any questions or if you are struggling with any of the information, please reach out to me or submit those questions to um, the form because ideally I would be doing this face-to-face -face with you guys. Um, the fourth stage is dehumanization. Dehumanization is when one group denies the humanity of the other group. Typically, the other group is going to be equated to... Um, things seen as vermin, so anything that carries diseases or insects. Um, the reason that this is such a key stage in terms of devolving to genocide is because human nature has a natural revulsion against murder. It is not within us to take the life of another human or to see another human and not recognize their humanity. So in order to get that amount of people, aka the Nazi soldiers, in order to get that many people to commit what is essentially mass murder, you have to convince them that it is not murder. Um, and the way that you do that is by making the victim group or the targeted group not human, or not human in the eyes of the perpetra perpetrator group. This is why when we get down to stage um, nine, it is called extermination and not mass murder, because by that point, the uh, targeted group is no longer seen as human, and thus they're seen as a pest that needs to be exterminated. Typically, dehumanization starts with hate propaganda that is used to vilify the victim group. Um, this is, or these are a few examples of um, dehumanizing propaganda. So over here, 
Um, we have a piece of German propaganda against uh, the Jewish people. It's depicting a Jewish person as a rat. Notice the yarmulke, the word Jude, which is the German word for Jew. Um, the Star of David. And then here, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but uh, ear curls or the ringlet curls that go in front of the... Um, the ear, that is a very large symbol of Orthodox Judaism. And then here you see a coin purse with coins spilling out. One of the stereotypes of uh, the Jewish population and the Jewish community is that they are controlling of money, especially in large economy, uh, which is why when there is economic depression, they are frequently the group that is targeted first. And then Obviously, you notice the dagger with the swastika on top, um, exterminating the rat. Up here, this is a transcript. Um, one of the ways that the Rwandan genocide and the Interhamwe, um, which was the militia, one of the ways that they got their message out was over the radio. Um, it was actually the predominant way that they got the message out. So this is a transcript from one of the radio broadca broadcasts um, from late in the genocide. So it started in April. This is May 17th. Um, notice that here it says, it is sad to hear that the cockroaches, in this case they are referring to um, the Tutsi population, take 12-year children, young children to the battlefield and give them difficult tasks because uh, there are children still ignorant and not yet intelligent enough. Um, the child may think he can pass through the shootings or fly. They make him pass through fire. When they shoot, they tell him nothing bad can happen to him. So they're trying to make them look like evil, um, unhuman villains in a way. And then down in the bottom here, this is uh, anti-Japanese propaganda by the U.S. in World War II. Um, there was a lot of hatred of the Japanese um, after World War II. If you read Unbroken, you have a better understanding of why. But in this case, notice down here we have that um, very stark text that says, this is the enemy. Sorry, this thing keeps popping up. And then um, the depiction of the Japanese soldier is very unhuman. It almost looks more like a, a monkey or a monster than it does a human being. Um, notice the pointed nails, almost like claws or talons, and the um, stereotypical eyes as well as the grimace, and then the very stereotypical, like, 19. Um, 45, 1950 uh, kind of good American girl. <laughs>